If you can come on in and, and grab a seat, we'll do our best to get started. I want to take a moment to just uh, say good morning and, and welcome to this special call meeting of the uh, Greenways and Open Space Commission. Um, my name is Charles Suing, and I'm here today to serve as acting uh, chair of this meeting because our chairperson, Ann Tidwell, is unable to be here today due to travel. So um, I'm filling in her seat in her stead. I'm sure she will hear. Uh, she'd be fully engaged, but she's, she's given me an opportunity to be part of this, and so I appreciate that. Uh, just one word of housekeeping for those of us on the commission and, and, and where the, there are mics. In order to uh, be amplified, to use the mic, there's a button to the right. You push it, it turns green, and that allows you to speak into the mic, and when you're done, you can push it again, and it'll turn the mic off. Uh, if it's left on, then everything is picked up, and so... When you're not speaking, you may want to just be sure to, to turn it off. All right? So uh, it's about, what is it, 1140? I want to officially call uh, this meeting to, uh, to order. And once again, thank you for being here. Thank you for our, our council people who have joined us today and, and our community partners and, and constituents who, um, who recognize the importance of what our task is at hand today. That being said, I do want to take a moment to just ground in exactly what our task is today. Um, obviously, we know we're here to uh, be informed and, and make some, take some action on how e-bikes uh, are going to be used uh, on our greenways. Um, as a result of legislation from our Metro Council, we've been tasked to determine whether or not it would be appropriate to consider regulations more restrictive than what the current law, state law says. And so I wanna just take a second to, to read exactly what the, our, the, legis the resolution from Metro Council has tasked Greenways and Open Space to do. On August 17th of 2021, Metro P Council passed uh, RS 2021-1102 and it states, the legislation has asked for the Nashville Department of Transportation and Multimodal Infrastructure, otherwise known as NDOT, the Greenways and Open Space Commission, that's us, or the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation, and the Metro Legal Department to solicit input from the community regarding the use of electric bicycles, e-bikes, on greenways of the Metropolitan Government. Further, the council requests that EDOT, the Greenways and Open Space Commission, and the Metro Legal Department gather and review data from peer cities related to e-bikes on greenways to determine whether it would be appropriate to consider regulations more restrictive than current state law. NDOT, the Greenways and Open Space Commission, and Metro Legal Department should further work with organizations including Walk Bike Nashville and Greenways for Nashville when soliciting community input and in gathering peer city data and other information relevant to this process. And so as you heard, a process. The commission is part of a process that will eventually lead to how e-bikes are used on greenways. Um, in order to make this determination, it's gonna come in the form of a recommendation to parks, who will then have a recommendation to the Metro Council, who will then decide what, if any, action to take. To be sure, this body, besides making this recommendation, it's not a decision-making body in this process. That will ultimately happen at the Metro Council level. In order to make this recommendation, we've gathered data, as you just heard, from conducting a survey, reviewing the information from our peer cities, and we've heard from many constituents along the way. Much of the communication that I have received personally has been to recommend that we take no action and leave everything as is. However, to simply do nothing would be to disregard the task that you just heard that I read that we've been assigned to do. And so we want to be responsible, we want to do our due diligence, and we want to follow our instruction. So it's going to be more than simply take no action, which is why we all are here today. We are here to continue to evaluate based on as much information as available and make an informed determination and recommendation to pass forward. That being said, and I'll speak as one person on this commission, 
The question is not so much to me as whether or not e-bikes will be allowed on greenways, but more of how. It's not a yes or no, but rather a if and how. How can e-bikes be on greenways in a way that's safe, that have the necessary infrastructure and design in place? As many have shared, e-bike usage is on the rise and will likely continue to be. So therefore, our task is not simply to look at the status of e-bikes on greenways based on today's environment, but to be responsible enough to look down the road and anticipate the growth of this sector and make decisions that are good for the greenways for both today and tomorrow. So I just wanted to put that out there to ground exactly why we're here and what our task is. Um, as we were here on January 26th, um, we heard a lot of the information that came back from the survey. Uh, we'll start from there and move forward. We do have an agenda, however, so I believe after those introductory remarks, the next item of business is to review and vote on the minutes from, um, from the January 26th meeting. So council, uh, commissioners, I believe you received those in advance. And if you've had an opportunity to review that, then I'll accept a motion to uh, approve the minutes. Move approval. All right, thank you. It's been moved and second. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, motion carries. Minutes are approved. Um, the next thing I want to do is, is, is give um, Cindy an opportunity to share some information that I think will be uh, relevant and germane to what our task is today. Thank you, Charles. I just wanted to run through and just recenter everyone on the definition of e-bikes and the different classes so that we're all on the same page there with what, thank you, with what state law allows. Um, so I'm going to run through those. You have a copy. Uh, so I won't read all of it, but I will read the relevant part. Class one electric bike means an electric bicycle equipped with a motor that provides assistance only when the rider is pedaling and that ceases to provide assistance when the bicycle reaches a speed of 20 miles an hour. A class two electric bicycle means an electric bicycle equipped with a motor that may be used exclusively to propel the bicycle. No pedaling required. You can pedal, it does come with pedals. Um, it's not capable of providing assistance when the bicycle reaches the speed of 20 miles an hour. So up to 20 miles an hour, it provides electrical assist. A class three electric bicycle means an electric bicycle equipped with a motor that provides assistance only when the rider is pedaling up to 28 miles an hour. A uh, <clears throat> couple of other things. This was a question I don't think Councilman, uh, Councilwoman Henderson is here, but we had discussed last time about whether e-bikes needed to have um, labels on them that identify what type of class they are. Tennessee state law already covers that, so they, those are required. Um, in terms of operating e-bikes, a class one, a class two e-bike may be operated on any part of a street or highway where bicycles are authorized to travel and any path or trail intended for use by bicycles. However, a local government or state agency having jurisdiction over any part of any path or trail where bicycles are authorized to travel may regulate or prohibit by resolution or ordinance if a local government or by rule or policy of a state agency, the operation of class one electric bicycles and class two electric bicycles on those paths. No class three electric bicycles shall be operated on any path or trail where bicycles are authorized to travel. Any local resolution or ordinance or state agency rule or policy adopted in accordance with this subsection shall use the definitions in this part for electric bicycles, class one, class two, and class three. Thank you for those definitions. Any, any questions or clarity needed on what class one, two, or three? Okay, well, let's, let's just jump right into it. Um, we, we heard a lot from the survey and we, we, we also reviewed information from our peer cities uh, to analyze how they've taken on the same issue. Uh, and, and hopefully by the end of this meeting, we'll have some sense of next steps in terms of um, making a recommendation if we're able to get that done today so that we can keep moving this forward. 
that being said, I want to just open up the floor now. There were some, some homework assignments that we had, uh, several links, and so we can, we can start there or, or see if there's any um, opinions or, or directions on how to proceed. Yes. Mr. Chair, thank, thank you for um, guiding us through this process today. I, I, I just want to say that in, in reading through both the, the comments, the survey summaries, um, and the Pierce City reviews, what jumps out to me is the, the, the two biggest issues are um, speed of the, of the bicycle, um, and that ne is not necessarily um, a factor only of whether the bike is an e-bike or not. It's very much a factor of the owner behavior, the rider behavior. Um, and that may be, and, and I think long-term that's, um, that's an issue that may, we may want to address just in terms of enforcement um, of those interactions that we, that we see that where there's an encounter that's not necessarily a positive one. Um, and I think it's important as we move forward, if we talk about um, gathering data, that that data look to those issues of um, if speed is an issue, what type of bike um, is it that, that we're encountering? Again, so that we, we can separate out what the real problem is, whether it's the, um, the type of motor that it has or, or is it, is it um, owner behavior that we need to try to address. The, the second issue that I did see some concern about was, was crowding. Um, and I don't, I don't know necessarily if there's a scientific correlation um, that is drawn by way of the survey that says, you know, we'll, we'll only be crowded if we introduce this technology. I mean, I think that our greenways become more and more and more popular and they will become more crowded. Um, so I'm not, I'm not, I didn't see as um, a strong a correlation drawn. I think there's a, there's an association people make in their mind of if we, if we allow this, therefore it will definitely be crowded and therefore I'm against it. But I'm not, I'm not sure that's a, a scientific connection to actually make. But those to me were the, were, were two legitimate concerns that I think we need to be thoughtful um, as stewards of the Greenway Commission that, that we ensure that our greenways continue to be a place where people um, can exercise and enjoy being outside in a, in a way that is safe. Um, and so I don't, I have not, I, this did not, the data has not pushed me to the conclusion that we need to exclude e-bikes because they're unsafe. I think it, perhaps it has driven us to the inclusion. We need to learn more about the speed problem and what causes it. And to me, that's a recommendation that we could make. Thank you. Yes. The only other issue that I saw in the, in the materials that I read uh, that could lead to a safety concern with e-bikes would be the weight of the e-bikes. And I don't know anything about that. I just saw that expressed in the materials and I've heard it anecdotally that because they are so much heavier than regular bikes that they could lead to more serious injuries. That I'd like to know something more about. So I'm starting to hear a couple of themes emerge, uh, concerns being that of safety and then user experience. Uh, how are the greenways uh, being experienced by the users so that there's not crowding, for example, uh, whether that's too many of anything. Um, of course, our charge today is, is to discuss uh, the usage of e-bikes, so we're going to focus our attention on, on that particular main issue. Um, and I, I, I agree with you. Yes, Councilperson. I um, just want to comment on the weight thing. I have, a, I have a 1950 Schwinn bike for two that weighs 100 pounds. <laughs> And my, my kids, when they were little, loved riding on that thing because it was so cool. Um, you know, so I, I don't know about the weight issue. I mean, you know, there are some heavy people um, that have extra momentum. You know, I mean, do, I, think, I think it's a worthy question, but I, I think it opens up a much larger issue of, you know, what else is, what else is heavy, you know, or should just little bitty people like you be allowed to ride bikes, you know? Um, 
So I just, I just throw that out as confounding factors, not necessarily as an answer. Any other thoughts? Yes. Um, you know, I, I just wanted to say a couple of overview things. Um, I frankly, I'm really thankful for the information that came out through this, this um, report and all those who had something to do with it, I really want to express that. Um, I think it's, um, there are many things in here that will help guide the Greenways Commission in the future um, about our greenways and a number of things that need to be looked at. And they do, a number of them actually, um, to me, uh, impact the issue of safety on our greenways. The issue of signage, the issue of the widths of our greenways, the issue of separation on our greenways, um, and I and there are, and of course enforcement came out over and over and over again. Um, so I am struck by a couple of things. Obviously, that we're not the only place in the country <laughs> struggling with this issue and that there have been some um, steps taken before us in places that I think might be helpful to us. Um, I am struck by the fact that in many of these places it's clear to them that not one size fits all. They come at it and they deal with it in a number of different ways that, you know, we're not here to draw up regulations, but we, we can consider drawing the attention um, to some of the things that um, frankly may end up needing to be budget items, but, uh, but which should be helpful information for the, the council. Um, so, uh, and I'm also struck by how wonderful it is that we have new potential greenways coming on, you know, so, so, you know, that we've all been discussing that have the chance to deal with um, some of the safety issues that show up through here. But I think we are very focused right now on the issue of our, what I would call our legacy um, 100 miles. Maybe not all of them, but most of them are fairly thin um, in their width. And so, you know, I think we've got a number of safety issues. I am also struck by the fact that we have a lot of opinions that showed up through the community, and I'm anxious to really think about that as we move forward. But I, I am concerned that we don't really, that we don't have all the data that we need to be able to say one way or the other whether there's a safety issue. So. I'm not giving you conclusions. I'm just giving you my <coughs> thoughts, and I welcome a conversation um, about any or all of these. But Chair, yes, so, thank you. Uh, one point that uh, Ms. Nelson brought up is separation in long greenways. Um, I, so I had a chance. I, I lived in Minneapolis, Minnesota, for. Um, few years and um, I think they do a great way of separation along their greenways throughout the city actually it connects all the way through Minneapolis through St. Paul uh, the width and the separation I think uh, leads to some of those thoughts on safety concerns in regards to our greenways um, uh, when you see successful cities that have successful greenways uh, you, you'll see a bike lane and a walking lane um, so you have four different lanes, right? And we don't have the opportunity for that, or well, we don't have that. Uh, we have the opportunity for that. It's a budget conversation even more, but um, uh, the thing with bikes, um, as you're walking along a path, if you're walking or jogging, um, if you're moving yourself without a vehicle of some sort, you're going to be moving slower than that vehicle, right? So if you're walking, you're going to be moving slower. If it's a pedal bike, if it's an e-bike, if it's something that propels you. Um, and so this is a deeper conversation than should we allow 
on the e-bikes. I think, I think broadening the scope of what we need to have safer greenways, um, regardless of motorized vehicles or not, I think this is, is, is it's, a, it's a deeper scope is when I look into the greenways and the e-bikes, um, I think e-bikes are, are very beneficial, to be quite honest. Um, not everyone can pedal along the way, but if you want to get out and, and, and exercise, um, I, I, my bike doesn't have a, a motor. I wish it did. Sometimes I just got to get off and walk beside it, uh, especially going up a few hills. But when, when we think about the greenways, our greenways width is a great point. It's, it's not wide enough um, for regular bikes or, or and people walking, walking dogs uh, or just taking a stroll uh, in the evening. Um, and so I think that that's a, a point that we, we really, uh, this group can kind of look into as we start to, to build out our greenways. Um, a great opportunity is looking at the width in the, in the greenways to provide more um, space for uh, both, uh, both uh, pedestrians on foot as well in, on, on motorized vehicles or, or e-bikes or regular bicycles or scooters that kids are using just with their feet pedal. And so thinking of, of ways that we can um, kind of broaden the scope to just add overall safety in our greenways, I think is the most important. Um, so we have bike lanes where you have a, a bike lane going east, west, north, south, um, two bike lanes, uh, one way or the other, and then two walking paths, one way or the other. Um, that we have to find the space in the city to do that uh, with our current e, uh, greenways, but um, I think it's something we can look into. Okay. And, then, and I think that this would decrease this conversation just a hair if we had that space. So thank you, Chair. Chair, if I may, just to add to that a little bit. Um, our system is 30 years old. We just turned 30. And our original trails were built at what was the standard then, 10, 10 feet wide. And then we moved as we went along to 12 foot wide trails. And now we're, you know, we're asking and, and uh, attempting to have 14 feet wide trails. That has to be balanced depending on where the trail's located. If we're out in a natural area like um, Warner Park or along the Harpeth River, it's balance between intruding into floodway buffers, removing trees, creating that natural um, you know, environment and, and sticking with that. <clears throat> Urban trails where it might be feel more appropriate to have wide, wide trails and we would like to have that. When we come into a built environment, with utilities and um, buildings, it, it's a challenge. And in some places we're pinched down, but you're absolutely right. When we can have the wider width, it certainly provides more opportunities um, to reduce some of those conflicts. Um, I think our East Bank is you know, a good place to try to achieve some of those things. I think an overall robust bike, bike lane, sidewalk, Greenway system working together um, addresses a lot of that too. Our greenways are based you know, originally along our eight major waterways, and now we're, we're breaking into the urban core with the city central greenway. Um, but they're not going to get you everywhere just by the nature of what they are. They are linear parks. They are focused on, on those areas. They're not typically out in the public right of way. That's where you have our bike lanes and our sidewalks. Um, the connectivity there is important in figuring out how to make that last half mile, quarter mile connection from a bus stop to a greenway or to a bike lane. Uh, all that's important. Um, so I agree, and, and we are, and it's a good point. We need to strive where we can to widen those out, to be lovely to separate, even on the greenway, have a, a green separation between faster moving cyclists and um, skaters and and uh, let the kids who are learning how to ride a bike still be safe and the peds and moms with strollers and all. Um, good points and I think as we're working through some of our new urban greenways, those are things that we're addressing there. Thank you for those comments. Uh, you, you used the word system, greenway system, and that's, that struck me that greenways is, is, is not just one thing. It's a combination of many uses. 
and there is no one-size-fits-all approach. One thing that I've gleaned from looking at our peer cities, it's each one of them recognized that they needed to decide what was right based on the infrastructure and the style and width and, 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 and design of those particular greenways. And what exists in Atlanta may be different than what's in Denver or what's in Austin or what's in Charlotte or what's in Nashville. So what I'm hearing through this conversation are a lot of questions. Concerns about safety, concerns about design, concerns about infrastructure. Um, but really, the, the underlying point is there's just not a lot that we know really to be, to, to be able to make a yes or no type of determination. I, I hear that there is perhaps a will to continue to study this uh, and do a little bit more due diligence in order to gather that data so that we can make a responsible long-term decision and not just a, a, a quick reaction to an immediate situation. Is, is, is that the sentiment that is consistent amongst us? You have a comment? Yes. Sure. Thank you, Chair. Well said. Um, as Cindy said, this whole conversation is coming into the crosshairs of the 30th anniversary of Greenways. And unfortunately, e-bikes have been the issue that has, has elevated this. I'm agreeing with uh, Councilmember Allen that I don't have enough yet data yet to say that we need some sort of additional regulations on, on e-bikes specifically. To me, there is an underlying infrastructure issue that I think that should be more about the, what the study should be about rather than singling out a... Uh, a particular use. When I read all these comments uh, from folks, um, to me what it says is this is an education issue. And I'll be the first one to admit, I've never ridden an e-bike. And so I appreciate the, the education from those that, that uh, ride them now. Um, and uh, and I, I agree with what Walk Bike is saying as far as let's work together to solve the education design infrastructure issues. Um, those are the, that is the study that I think that really needs to be done. I don't want to single out a use. Um, and I think we're, I think that we are all in agreement that our greenways have evolved to become part of our transit infrastructure. I want to ensure safety, absolutely, safety first. Um, but I also don't want to single out a particular use. So to me that, I don't know that this is, I, I don't yet know that we need a pilot project per, per se that singles out a particular use as opposed to a broader infrastructure study that says these are the evolved uses of our greenway system and so let's see if we can try to accommodate those. Um, I don't yet have enough data to say that there are too many e-bikes, that there are unsafe e-bikes or, or, or anything like that yet. Um, I think we need to continue to gather that data, but for me, fundamentally, um, the infrastructure issue is, is uh, predominant. Um, when I try to get my arms around the whole thing, there are three issues. There's the infrastructure issue, there's individual users with e-bikes, and then when we get to it, there is the B-cycle conversation. Those are the three categories when I try to get my brain around this, this whole issue. Um, if we can focus on each of those three, I think we are making progress together. Good points. So I think if we want to advance this, uh, to your point, I think there's two lanes as I look at this as an individual. Um, one is to, to, to respond directly to the legislation and make a recommendation uh, to parks about what we should do to consider e-bikes. That, that's, that's one level. Uh, I think the bigger level or deeper level is what you just suggested, um, which would be an overall infrastructure review so that we incorporate all parts of Greenway's usage into this process. I, I guess what I hear you saying is if we're going to go down this road and, and allocate resources, let's make it a comprehensive review and not narrow it to, to just one type of use. How, do, how does the commission feel about that direction? I, I would agree with that. I think that's a good assessment. I think part of our process of gathering data then is to, I, mean, I guess our recommendation to the parks board um, could be the immediate response to our charge simply with regard to e-bikes is let's let them be there and let's gather data. Um, 
and then we've got a whole other conversation that's different. Um, I don't know if in, in that recommendation to the Parks Board, which then goes to the council, if we wanna put a time frame and a specific methodology for gathering data, to me it does seem useful in, in some uh, limited typical space to have someone doing you know the 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 green the, the greenway equivalent of, of a traffic study like we do on you know on a corner how many cars are going fast and how fast are they going um, that might be useful data just in in terms of of the general questions that council member Syracuse has raised but I, I think that um, that part of that process is saying let's stop holding back on what can be on the greenways. I mean, officially we haven't. Officially everything is allowed. Um, I mean, there, there is the related issue of empty kiosks sitting on park property and is part of the learning process to have bikes at those kiosks to see if people ride them. Um, I mean, that's sort of a different question, but it's, it, it is related and I, and I think it's a conversation that we probably need to have some discussion on in terms of does that does that provide us with information that we want to have just with your your very uh, important question about growth you know let's let's try to make the rules for what it's going to look like five years from now because we've learned with other you know disruptive new economies that like i say it's you know it's like letting your pop, puppy on the couch it's fine <laughs> until they turn into a great day you know and then you realize that was a bad idea um you know, so to, to, to try to think through, you know, how, how we frame this today so that we have the ability um, to adjust if we, if we discover that growth is, is changing the way it works. Let's talk nuts and bolts in terms of how we want to craft those recommendations um, in, 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 you know, particular language if we can so that if we can get through that process then we can likely um pass a motion that we can that we can submit as a recommendation so what are those particularly for the, those of you who are crafty and and experienced it <laughs> at um, making motions um let's put some language to that if we can One thing I would like to say is I think it is important for us to have some language that relates directly in some summary form to the things that the council has asked in that resolution. And then wide input from the community on the use of greenways. And there's some very important information in there, some of which does relate to, to e-bikes, and some of it relates, I mean, they, you know, as I recall, and I've read all of this, so my recollection is a little more blurred than if I'd just read the headlines, but, um, you know, class one, for example, was roughly 50-50, or that people wanted them, Class two was a different issue. It was much less positive. And, um, you know, and so I, I want to be cross-checked by what we're, what I'm saying, but I, and as we know, class two, you can ride it without pedaling. You can, as I understand it, you can get on it, you can, it can propel without that. And that puts you in a different, different situation. So I think we need to think about how we would say, what we'd say about impact from the com input from the community, even in a summary, summary form, um, because our community is, um, as, as represented by this, this, there's a lot of mixed feelings. I think that would be an expression. And the second was the da um, data to determine. Let's see where have I got there. To determine whether it's appropriate um, to consider regulations more restrictive than current state law is, a, is the other direct 
thing to be addressed. And, you know, where I come down is we don't really, there's, there's, there is so much in the first part, um, and there's so many examples from other cities of things that we would want to look at to determine whether it's appropriate to consider regulations. And so I, I, that's where, this is kind of the lawyer and me, we, at, we need to respond to what we're asked for, or we're skipping over, over to things that, um, that are issues we pick out, all of which have been appropriate issues, but I just want to put that in the considerations. So I'm going to try to craft that into the beginning of a recommendation. And it would be something along, along the lines of having conducted a thorough survey and heard the voices of the community, we have not determined that more regulation be considered at this time, period. However, and then we can continue, continue the thought. <laughs> And the however could be however we are uh, genuinely concerned about safety, regulations, enforcement, infrastructure design, and deem it necessary to conduct additional um, surveys, not, not surveys, additional research um, to first determine the information as it pertains to e-bikes. Additionally, to consider a, uh, a, a complete infrastructure review to make sure that um, greenways are, are, are safe and adequate for all users. I can't repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, those we can we can come up with the exact language uh, to present, you know, with the right wordsmithing, uh, but I'm just trying to really capture the ideas, uh, and 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 you know, right now to see how we might want to advance this by way of a recommendation. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chair. I, I do think that to to Jeannie's point that we do address what the resolution asked for, and I think in our uh, proposed recommendation here that perhaps we do ask for continued gathering of data specific to e-bikes so that we can address this, but also then request that, that e-bikes are an example of expanded use, and that leads us into the overall infrastructure development to Cindy's point that we started at this wide, then we're here, then we're trying to go 14. What are the best practices, the similar that we do with streets and sidewalks or whatnot? We have to ensure we have some uh, solid best practices. We can get into the weeds on specific areas when you can only go that wide. So in, in, do we need specific signage to make sure that folks are slowing down, things like that. So I think uh, as an um, uh, infrastructure study, that's, I, I think, as I said the first time, that is the overall goal that I think we should achieve. But obviously, to, to speak to our resolution, we still need to say we recommend continued gathering data on e-bike usage. They're expanding like crazy. I can see myself in, in, in some years probably eventually getting one. I'm an avid biker right now, but uh, sometime in, in the future, perhaps, I, I would be an e-bike user as, as well. So um, let's continue to gather data on e-bike specifically, but also let's give parks the tools to be able to do an overall infrastructure study. Chair, I, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just going to throw out a few key words that, as designers, that might help you all. Just throwing out um, design standards covers a lot of what you're talking about. Um, enforcement, we've, we've heard that. Safety. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, education, signage, messaging. A, a, an overall campaign, uh, maintenance and sustainability of the trails, those kinds of things I think are important. Uh, I've actually got a list back here. Um, bear with me. Forget any of this. And, you know, with design standards, there's width, 
there's materials, um, there's speed and um, traffic calming measures that might be needed. I think understanding where you know, every greenway is different. It's different by topography, it's different by usage. Um, it's natural environment differs. So there's the conservation aspect that greenways perform. Uh, and so those kinds of things uh, need to be looked at. Future uses, we don't know what some of the future innovation will be, but we've seen that in some of these um, peer studies of the kind of unintended things that happened because of innovation. So I think we need to think about that. Obviously the size, um, the overall system and how we are able to tie in, where should we be tying in? Where should, you know, we have a master plan. I think we're, we've got a pretty good structure there for, for development, but still there's, I think there's some more work to do there. Speed limit, we don't have a codified speed limit. Um, you know, so that's an issue. Um, some cities have dedicated trail police. Don't know if that's what Nashville wants, but they have, some have volunteers, some have just have park rangers, some have nothing. Um, so those are things to think about. Um, I'm just gonna, I'll leave it at that. Just maybe some words for thought there. Thank you. Um, well, I think we should definitely codify the 15 mile an hour speed limit because that seems to be something that I think everyone is comfortable with. Um, and if that is, if that's appropriate to be part of our recommendation, I'd love to include that. I wanna say again, I think we need to gather data on e-bikes and bikes. Um, because I think if we only do the e-bikes then we, then we miss the opportunity to understand the whole picture. And I think that's really important. Um, so I would just add, add that word e-bikes and whatever we call the push bikes, whatever. Um, but I think we need data on, on both of those um, as, as one of the, in, in our, however, we recommend continuing data gathering on e-bikes and bikes with regard to speed and number, and then look at design standards, signage education, and um, enforcement with regard to optimizing our greenways and codify the 15 mile an hour speed limit. I'm gonna throw one more word out um, or two, trail capacity. I think we need to, to look yeah. at that. Yeah, good point. One of the things I'm struggling with is the difference between e-bikes and regular bikes. And so when we talk about gathering data on both regular bikes and e-bikes, I think it's not just a matter of the data of how many are there and how fast are they going, but I, I'd like to see some information as well on um, accidents and injuries and so on to, to find out if there is a reason for a heightened concern about e-bikes. I haven't seen anything like that but that's what I'd like to know. And I don't think that's something that you get from, from uh, just counting the number of bikes on the, on the greenways. I don't know how we get it, but I don't think that's the way to do it. There, there may be re a, a reported incidents, you know, through the parks or Hospitals. through the police or something. I think one thing that we're lacking is an easy way to make those reports. Often there's an incident that happens it doesn't rise to the level of calling the police or calling an ambulance, but maybe it's an incident. And um, I think there are ways that we can make that easier for the public to report those kinds of things. Uh, and I think that would be probably part of a, both a safety campaign and an educational campaign. Signage, um, you know, when we look at, at the system as a whole and understand where our users are, what the quantity is, um, the different types of uses. We're gonna see the hot spots, I believe. And you know, those are areas that we can focus on to get more information. As we did the Peer City reviews, there's not a lot of data out there. You know, it's, there just isn't, and each city is unique. And you know, I said last time I would love to put this all in a nice clean little chart and handed it to you, but um, it's, it's just not there like that. So um, we can, I think we can learn from other cities and the things that they did to address their own issues in terms of studies and, and some of the commonalities, but we also have our own um, specific things to address. I wanted to just, on the 15 mile per hour um, codification, it, uh, runs a little bit against the one size fits all concern that that I have. You know, I've really been 
I must admit in this description, I was taken by Austin's, what they call pilot project. And I don't know if we're looking at this as gather more data and relook and then how long that's going to be, you know, it's, it's, there are some issues there, but on the 15 mile per hour, um, I don't know how we, I think we need to think about how we put that. Is that the maximum? I mean, there may, there can be areas where you really need to, to go down to, when some of these cities, somebody did eight miles per hour at a particularly dangerous place, you know, so we're not going to be able to build our greenways into the perfect safedom, maybe ever. But um, anyway, I just throw that sure. out and ask Cindy whether a straight 15 per hour. I think, I think you have a valid point. We have seen cities like the Atlanta Beltline where during peak hours they reduce the speed and uh, speed limit. Uh, Austin, I think, was eight miles an hour. So I, I think in understanding usage and um, in gathering that data, we're going to see those peak times and understand um, where that might need to happen, where there might need to be a reduction of speed for safety reasons during certain times or on certain trails. Um, and I don't want to slow anything down because I, and so I'm tempted to just say, hey, let's put in a maximum to be looked at or something. I, but I just wanted, didn't want that to, to pass because this enforcement issue is so prevalent amongst everybody. I mean, you know, I don't care if you're the, you know, all you ever do is ride a class three. You're still worried about about that enforcement issue. So, and perhaps it's a maximum, you know, codified maximum speed limit of 15 miles an hour, except for otherwise restricted. I, Not so, to exceed. Yeah, y'all, you attorneys know how to do that better than I do. But um, I do think there needs to be it needs to be codified. Otherwise, we're just making suggestions, and we need to have some some standards. By way of a process, are, are you able to go back and gather all of this and put it in writing and formulate it in some sort of paragraph sentence? <laughs> and I don't mean well, between now and one o'clock because um, we're probably not going to accomplish that part of it, but I think we've got a direction that we know we want to go. I, I'm not sure how appropriate that is for me to do that. I think okay. you all, maybe you all write, um, I don't know if you take a few minutes to to write down your thoughts on that. I, I'm happy to add you know, okay. words like I did. I, I, I think you need some time to hear, to sit and kind of hash it out. Um, I'm wondering, Cindy, on the part where it's like all the things to be looked at, that whole list, you couldn't kind of do that. And then we, you might want then to look we at that. Edit. Those came from other cities. Those are things that they considered. They may be appropriate for Nashville. They may not. Um, that might be a place for you to start. I believe page 197 and 198. Um, and again, those are just things that as we went through and looked at what other cities considered, those are things they might or might not have addressed. It might help you. And maybe I'll add too, um, when we get ready, if you all decide that a, a study is needed and, and um, when we get ready to do that, that would you know, we would hire a firm to do that. We would write a scope of work and get really get into the very, very specifics that you all may not need to do today. Maybe you hit the general. Here are the concerns that we think need to be investigated and um, and then we can get into the, the nitty gritty specifics. I like that. N <laughs> nitty gritty is my technical term. So uh, one other type of language, I just want to be sure that we're not sending a message accidentally to the whole use Greenway users to the thousands of people who responded for the plan to play and what the priorities were, what they really wanted on the greenways, that we don't send a message that we are all about finding any and every way for all kinds of 
future uses and leaving that behind. I don't know how we do that, but I just, I just have a part of me from a, a long history with Greenways and from reading the plan to play and what people came forth and said. And then, of course, in these, there were a lot of those kind of comments in, in here, too. So on our language people. And if you look at the surveys or the charts, it, at the very beginning, it does, you know, there are listed the reasons why people use our greenways and plan to play does include a lot of that too. So um, it's two good sources, this survey and, and, and plan to play. And I, you know, I can, I can take you to those pages, I think here relatively quickly. Um, so bear with me. So on page 12, ways of use, and um, page 23, reasons for use. I think those highlight a lot of what you were speaking about, Jeannie. And keep in mind too, they're linear parks, multi-use, we like our pets, we like our cyclists, we like our dogs and kids and everything else. Um, they do provide connectivity, they provide conservation, they provide healthful living. So all those things is what we're trying to balance um, as we build out this system and how to best make that work. Hopefully we can glean some of that through, the, through a study. And I believe we can accomplish what you're suggesting uh, with our opening statement. Uh, with an idea of something like the Greenways and Open Space Commission is committed to ensuring the best use growth development of our Greenways for all uses, users and appropriate usages of our Greenways. To, to, to make the statement in the beginning to give confidence that we are here to make this best use possible for all users and, and not looking to create restrictions that are going to inhibit anyone's ability to enjoy the greenways just by making that statement out front. I almost wish we had a flip chart where I could just write some of these, these things down for you all to see and I'm, um, I'm not sure of how to accomplish that right now, but... Um, we have a flip chart down the hall. Any ideas? Mr. Chair. Whiteboard. Um, I'm happy to be your scribe. Yes, I'm sorry. So, so we're, we're attempting now to, to craft the language for the recommendation, right? Um, yes, without, without the scope of work. We'll so, leave that for the experts. Right, right. So, absolutely. So am I hearing, uh, Cindy, that uh, you all agree that we need to do some sort of study and you already have some thoughts as to what the scope should be of, of that? I think we have a need as a city, a 30-year-old system, to look at how it's functioning, irregardless of the e-bike question or, or any of those kinds of questions. We've identified in, you know, just internally the need to gather data. Not only will it help us with designs going forward, but it might help us with grant funding and, and those kinds of things. We get those questions asked. Um, so maybe, you know, again, I, I don't want to lead you. Right. right. Um, but maybe it's a, a broader recommendation of, of gathering data and that we, as the you know, staff and professionals building greenways can further develop what that scope would be. I, I'm open to you. You are very thoughtful about this, so I don't want to put words in your mouth. But. I know I hear you, but you're also the subject matter expert. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I always see my job as supporting our yeah. subject matter experts in our various departments. Well, you know I can um, get into the weeds, to, and I, I'll try not to. But, uh. <laughs> um, can we gra craft language that uh, doesn't, doesn't limit the scope on certain words and we might miss something? Is there something that we can craft to say that the scope to be determined uh, by uh, some sort of collaborative e efforts um, so that we don't, aren't so specific that we've narrowed ourselves into a, a corner? Um, 
I want to give some latitude, but uh, also some specificity, <laughs> right? Um, so how do we make, craft a, a recommendation that has a broad enough scope to give to the parks uh, board uh, that they can then craft the, the ultimate scope? Are, are we, from a time frame and process perspective, do we need to, this has to be done now so that we can get something to, to, to parks board because are we looking at trying to fund this study in the upcoming budget? So we have capital Is dollars it? that can be used um, to, you know, it's a de greenway development so they can, they can certainly be used for that. Um, just practicalities, if, if we want to be on the next park board agenda. Right. Um, well, I guess we're already on there because it was deferred, but we, we have till Tuesday for any kind of new, you know, that's the deadline for being on the agenda. So I think just asking to be back on it um, is, is Tuesday. I th I'd like to see us, if you all are comfortable, to get that recommendation on to them, um, whatever you decide to craft. I wonder if we're getting a little far afield though from the request that was made to us by council and that um, if we don't have here actually a two-part recommendation that we're talking about and the first part is let's not make any changes with respect to e-bikes at this time we don't have any information at this time that tells us that there's a reason to further regulate them on the greenways um, we do recommend that there be more information gathering about e-bikes and regular bikes. But in addition, we recommend that there be this broader infrastructure study that will also address safety concerns that were raised during the surveys. Is that a motion? <laughs> I say that a little bit tongue in cheek, but I think you, I think you encompassed uh, in, in what, we're, what we're at least att uh, attempting to address. I'm willing to make it a motion. I couldn't repeat it, as you said <laughs> earlier. But. It's a good thing it's being recorded. Um, so I, I mean, if we're willing to, how, do, how, do, how does the commission feel about that? as a motion before before I ask for a second. Is it possible, I don't know the technology, but is it possible for it to be read back by the... <laughs> I, I did take... So beautiful. <laughs> I'm typing over here and I did catch, I think, most of it. Um, Jeannie, I think if, we, if it is a motion, the motion would be to make a two-part recommendation to the Parks Board Number one, recommending that there be no change as to, the, as to any regulations on e-bikes at this time. However, acknowledging that um, we do not yet have sufficient information to address the safety concerns that have been raised in the survey, the second part of the recommendation would be to engage in a broader collection of data as to the Greenway infrastructure. Is that fair to say? And yes, and I, I think there was also something in there too about collecting additional data about e-bikes as opposed to regular bikes. Okay. So you just, at or the both. beginning part, bikes and e-bikes. Yeah. Correct. All right, if we're comfortable with that as a, a motion, then all we need is a second. Second. All right. It's been moved and properly second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, indicate by aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Good job. Now, now the real work begins. <laughs> Good job, Mr. Substitute Chair, <laughs> or acting chair, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Mr. Chair, yes. would it be possible once some version of that, I and mean, I'm thinking Tyler is the keeper of it, gets 
gelled that that could be sent to all of us just so we can be sure we know what we voted on. I mean, I, I don't think we can actually have any discussion by email, just by Correct. open government law, but just so we can all see what, yeah. what it finally looks like. Thank you. And also, wasn't there some language that you were thinking of putting in the first part? Well, I, th I think we wanted to just m make a statement, uh, and I don't know if that's part of the, the motion or not, or if it's just an overall part of our recommendation. The recommendation can include a motion. The recommendation and the motion don't have to be one document or one statement. Um, but to make the intentional statement that the Greenway is an open space uh, commission is committed to ensuring best use, best practice, and that um, you know, we've, we've heard the voices of the survey and, and, and the community constituents and are mindful of that and want to incorporate uh, their thoughts into our, our, our next action. I think it's good to just kind of have a statement and then, and then the, uh, the recommendation itself. Great. Part of that statement could also address the issue that, you know, we're recognizing that ours is a 30-year-old system uh, it, it just makes sense to be prudent about looking forward and, and developing in the future. So if we can eventually capture that and, and, and just by way of a, of a statement. That doesn't need, I don't think, a motion. It's just a statement. Just one other thing, um, and this is something that um, Councilwoman Allen mentioned, was something about... Um, any kind of timeline. And I know that, um, that uh, f for a variety of reasons, I don't want to put pressure on parks um, or on greenways, but um, I think it's something to think about, you know, because should, should it come back that there's a safety issue, then you don't want, you don't, you don't want anybody to have gone for a long time making investments they wouldn't have made otherwise or, or any of those other kinds of implications. So um, I don't know how we deal with that, but it's just something to think about. And I would think the count, any council members who had questions, because we're saying we don't have enough information to tell you you need to regulate for safety. That's basically what we're saying. So. I think there's some things to think about in, in that, um, looking at what the other cities have done, anywhere between nine to a year, one year, nine months to a year study. Um, in Nashville, we enjoy four seasons, so perhaps that's you know logical that it would that it would last a year. Certainly, if there are safety issues that come to light that could be addressed immediately, I mean that's that's just in terms of operationally we would do that. Um, if it, in terms of design, you know, if we can incorporate that as we're working through other projects, things that come to light. So I don't think it's really a matter of, of everything being put on hold until the end necessarily, uh, if, if things need to be addressed immediately. I think that's more council, what, how you all, council members feel about that. It seems worth getting on somebody's agenda, you know, next January to touch base and, and find out where we are. And I don't know if that's a, um, I, don't, I don't know how far ahead you write the agendas, but, to, you know, to have this on the agenda for the Greenways Commission, you know, January, or February, the regular meeting, typically. Um, this, was a, this, this was a... This was our regular meeting. Gotcha. So we're into April, um, February, March, April. Um, and one thing in the motion, I'm just thinking about, Jeannie had, and Berkeley, you had both mentioned codifying the speed limit. I don't know if that was captured in the motion or not. Just throwing that out there. I don't think it was. Does it need to be? The, Can the council not to just... exceed? Well, right now, the speed limit, maximum speed limit on the trails are 15 miles an hour. But that's just and a that's rule. That's just a rule. A... Okay. So, at the very least, I would hope that we could codify that. I think through the through a study, we would understand if there were a need to allow for it to be restricted in different ways on different trails. Um, 
maybe what we do is we just pass another, uh, we vote on that and we put it as a second recommenda uh, recommendation that goes to the Parks Board to, to send to Council. Or we use the data that we gather to inform what we actually do and wait. I mean, currently there are signs that say 15 miles an hour, right? I mean, I think Joe Citizen is not gonna know whether that's a rule or a code. You know, and that's right. It, it comes down to if there's an issue, if there's if someone is has caused a wreck and it's due to speeding, there's no, you know, there's no real um, response to that legally, I guess. Gotcha. Right. And I'll just note that we don't currently have any enforcement mechanism on our greenways. So codifying it versus it being a rule in reality doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think there's any harm in waiting then until we've got more data to tell us 15, 15 is good, except on that awful hill near the dam where it should be 10 <laughs> or one or whatever. So I'm, I'm okay with not doing that yet. Um, I mean, again, it needs to be in the notes next February that we talk about what did we learn from the data and does that tell us any legislation that needs to be passed, including whether we want to codify a 15 mile an hour speed limit, unless, you know, restricted in other places? That, that would be my recommendation. That's my thought. All hearts and minds clear? All right. Any other business? There being none. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, do. absolutely. Chair, if I may, I'm not on the committee on the commission. No, by all means. I appreciate it. Emily Benedict, District Seven Metro Council. Is there any chance you guys could talk about B cycle in the parks? I don't know if that was a part. I thought it was a part of the e bike. So, I don't mean to throw something on your agenda that doesn't belong there, but I just didn't know if we had clarity for the public on that or not. So, again, you don't need to take that up, but I wanted to throw it out there. Thank you, Chair. Is there anything in place right now stopping B-Cycle from being on the greenways? They had agreed um, to wait until we got this study done at the request from Monique Odom. So there are 11 stations that are currently sitting empty. I think there's the question of, of um, who who should be responsible for vendors in metro parks, and um, who the, who a contract would be with, and who would manage that contract? I'm assuming that falls on council. The, the contract currently is with the downtown partnership. It's it's a funny thing because it <laughs> it. It, it sort of went away during COVID and how in the world it, it, it was an orphan. And so I think downtown partnership, it just fell into their lap. Um, they have some of them, some of 11 of them are on Metro Parks property. I think there was, there you know, can be better discussion about what entity should own that when the contract gets renewed in June. In the meantime, we're between things, which makes it a little ambiguous. Uh, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, it is. It's, we're talking about existing infrastructure, an existing contract. We would like to reopen and have those stations available and of use for the public um, by April, if possible. If you all would recommend or allow, just so we can, you know, have it be open and available. To, but again, existing infrastructure, existing contract, and I, I'm not. I can. I'm happy to answer any additional questions. And commissioners, that's the, we don't have that. As a commission, you don't have that authority to create that rule. That is the park board um, creates policies for what happens on the on the park's property. Not yeah, we haven't we haven't done anything to open or close the door on B cycle in, in this as a commission. That's correct. As a commission, mm -hmm. so I mean, we we can't say yay or nay 
to that. Whatever is 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 what is, and if it's if there's an entity that needs to change it, then that would it, be the parks board. Yeah, okay. So as a if I'm understanding correctly, like if there is a recommendation that goes forth that to not currently make any existing changes to the existing state law. So that would continue to allow class one and class two e-bikes to, to continue to use the greenways. Then the B-cycle station, which would be allowed to reopen under that rule, because there's nothing that Parks is putting in place right now that would prevent that, because these are, would be class one e-bikes that would be in, the, in those stations. Am I understanding that correctly? The park board would, would regulate what happens on Parks property, not this commission. The commission here does not have the authority to regulate what happens. And there's no, no recommendation that you'd like to put forth? Our recommendation is that we don't put any restrictions or regulations in place. Thank you. Any final comments, thoughts? All right, there being none, we can uh, officially adjourn the meeting. Thank you all for being here today. This was very important. Thank you for your cooperation. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.